In this lesson we're going to use the law of sines to solve oblique triangles. And an oblique triangle is a triangle that does not have a right angle in it. And up until now we've been able to use the definition of the trigonometric functions given a right triangle. And those definitions don't apply to oblique triangles and so we'll need a different method. I'm just going to state the law of sines and then we'll actually do the proof right within the lesson because it's a, a pretty short proof. Basically the law of sines says that if a, b, and c are the measures of the angles of a triangle and lowercase a, b, and c are the lengths of the sides opposite these angles, then side a over the sine of angle a will be equal to the length of side b over the sine of angle b will be equal to the length of side c over the sine of angle c. In general, the ratio of the lengths of any side of a triangle to the sine of the angle opposite is the same for all three sides. So let's take a look at the proof. And so to prove this, the first thing we want to do is just drop a perpendicular from C down to the base of this triangle. Right. This is also called an altitude of the triangle. So this angle right here is a right angle, and so is this. And we'll start by just using the definition of the six trigonometric functions, or at least now the definition for sine. We know that the sine of B, so the sine of angle B, would be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so this altitude, we also use the letter H for it because it's the same as the height of a triangle. So the sine of B is H over A. And so if we multiply both sides by A, we're going to get H is equal to A times the sine of B. And we can also look at the sine of angle A, I'm looking over here, using this right triangle. And so the sine of A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, so that would be h over b. If I multiply both sides of this equation by b, I'd get h equals b sine a. So setting, since h is equal to h, that also means, so this is equal to this, that means that a sine b also has to be equal to b sine a. So I'll start by writing that down. I've got a sine b must be equal to b sine a. And I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by sine a sine b. What happens is when we cancel, we get a over sine of a equals b over the sine of b. This is the proof of the first portion of the law of sines, and we could do the same exact thing by drawing a perpendicular from angle A to side A, and we'd be able to add in the fact that this is also equal to C over, over sine C. It's a fairly simple definition to use to help you solve triangles that are not right triangles. It can actually be used to solving in solving right triangles, but most people like to refer back to the, the idea of Sokotoa when you have a right triangle, because it's a little bit easier to evaluate that way. Let's look at the first example. To solve a triangle, we basically want to find all angles and all sides, and we have to be given three pieces of information to do that, so we'll always be looking for three more pieces of information. So I start by drawing the triangle. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale, so I, I basically draw the same shape triangle every time and then set up my ratios. I'm going to label the three angles A, B, and C, and then I'm going to fill in the values that I have that I know are true. I have angle C is equal to 102.3 degrees. I know that angle B is 28.7 degrees, and side B which would be the side opposite angle B is 27.4. And I'll start by, by writing what I know. 
I know nothing about um, angle A at the moment, but I certainly have enough information. To solve this triangle, my job is to find out what angle A is equal to. I want, also want to find the lengths of side A and the lengths of side C. Since I know that the sum of the angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, it's easy to find A first. A would be equal to 180 degrees minus 28.7 minus 102.3, so A is equal to 49 degrees. I've found. Now I need to find little a and little c, and so this is when I'll use the, the law of sines. I start by setting up the law of sines. I know that a over sine a equals b over sine b. Generally when I'm looking for a missing side or missing angle, when I can, I'd like to use one complete ratio that was given to me in the problem. Since I know that b is 28.7 and that was given and the side b is 27.4, I'm going to use that ratio when I try to solve. Here I'll have A, which I don't know what that is, over the sine of 49 degrees is equal to B, which is 27.4, that's side B, over the sine of 28.7 degrees. I need to cross multiply to solve, so I have A times the sine of 28.7 is equal to 27.4 times the sine of 49. Now to solve for A, I'd have to divide both sides by 28.7. So dividing both sides by that 28.7 gives us A is equal to 27.4 times the sine of 49 degrees divided by the sine of 28.7 degrees. Let's use our calculator to evaluate A. I'm in degree mode, which I need to be. I'm going to hit 27.4 times the sine of 49 degrees divided by the sine of 28.7. And we'll round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we get 43.1 for side A. And that will be in feet. At this point, we now only have one piece left to find, the missing side C. Again, we can set up this relationship using A sine A, B sine B, uh, along with C over sine C, but I'd like to use what was given to me in the problem as my first complete ratio in case I made a mistake when I found the 43.1. So when when at all possible, use the values that you were given as opposed to values that you have found yourself. You know, there are times when, you, when you're forced to use a value that you have calculated, but if you can, avoid that, do. We'll set up a, another ratio. Our new ratio would be side C over the sine of angle C equals side B, which is 27.4, over the sine of angle B, which is 28.7. Setting the cross products equal to each other, we get C times the sine of 28.7 is equal to 27.4 times the sine of 102.3. Dividing each side by the sine of 28.7 gives us 28.4 times the sine of 102.3 divided by the sine of 28.7 degrees. We'll evaluate this in our calculator. So still in degree mode, we've got 27.4 times the sine of 102.3, close parentheses, divided by the sine 28.7, close the parentheses and hit enter. And we're going to round sides to the nearest tenth so we get approximately 55.7 for C. Now to check your work, 
we can check all of the, so we'll put the 55.7 on side C. To check your work, if you just set up the three ratios, I know that A, which is 43.1, divided by the sine of 49 degrees, should equal side B, 27.4, divided by the sine of 28.7, should equal side C, 55.7, divided by the sine of 102.3. And so we'll put these three values in our calculator. And they sh they're going to be off slightly because we rounded, um, but we can still get a decent idea if we've done this correctly. So 43.1 divided by the sine of 49. We get our value. 27.4 divided by the sine of 28.7 and enter and then 55.7 divided by the sine of 102.3 and so our values are very close they're off in the tenths place and we did round to the nearest tenth so that just gives us a decent idea if we did the problem correctly or not